Good afternoon. My name is Brandon Carter. I want to welcome everyone to the second session of the Ally PLM Lunch Bite series. Uh, last two weeks ago, you guys, if you joined, you saw a rendering session, and uh, today's session will be on surfacing. Uh, future sessions will be delivered every other Thursday at 12:30 Eastern, 11:30 Central. We want our lunch bites to be of value to you, so please email us with uh, topics that you want to see in future sessions. Also, we're, we're going to have a large crowd, and with the, uh, everybody's speakerphone and the feedback we get, we do have everybody on mute. So if you guys have any questions throughout today, uh, please just send us an email. I'd appreciate it, and we can answer to your questions. Uh, start reading emails as soon as we're done with the session. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, today's session is on surfacing. So what is surfacing and why use it? Products, you see some screenshots on the slide with some products from solid modeling. This is probably what most of us are used to, adding and removing material, mating those spaces up uh, from each other. Just to, just to get a little comparison of, of what we're, we're going to look at here with surfacing, solid-based features, faces rule. So we might, you know, create a plane on a, on a face and do holes for alignment, faces to mate and align like I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and round some edges for safety and strength. Edges and faces are mainly analytic based. For example, if you think about doing a revolved protrusion, if I take a cross section, I revolve it about an axis of revolution, the angular extent, which way it's going to add material in each direction, that edge is defined by the extent. It's not necessarily defined by a sketch or a curve in this extent direction. The modeling approach that we typically use here, we add and remove material, right? We have protrusions and cutouts, et cetera. And product function is primary concern. How pretty it is may be a secondary uh, requirement. Uh, on the screen now, coming up here, you should see some uh, the surface modeling products. You see some consumer products on the screen. So what we want to look at today is some surfaces, some surfacing tools, both from creating from scratch and also um, construction surfaces. So when we look at surface-based features, what are we looking at? We're looking at edges ruling. So you're going to see throughout today, and, and if you've used surfacing at all, you know that the underlying curves, your sketches, your guide curves, your 3D curves, drive the surface. So they're very, very important to surfacing. Um, edges and faces are mainly B-spline. We can use analytical sketch components, meaning lines and arcs, but we can also use a B-spline curve to get more of a contour. And once again, it's a key element in designing consumer products. But we may use it for constructions, and we'll look a little bit at that at the end of the session today. Uh, workflow for surfacing, just, just kind of a, a workflow here to look at. Uh, we can create 2D curves using sketches, like I mentioned earlier. If we need to create some 3D curves, uh, we can use tools like intersection curve, cross curve, curve by table, which you see on the surfacing tab or the surfacing toolbar. Uh, then we then, once we have those voids or those, those wireframe uh, uh, views from our sketches, we can create the surfaces using tools like extruded surface, swept surface, and blue surface, or blue surf. Once we have all those, those voids kind of filled with surface material, we'll go ahead and stitch them all together and make them a solid. Once we have them a solid, we can use some of the tools we're more familiar with possibly and use holes, rounds, thin wall because we're just working with the solid. We use surface to, surfaces to get to the solid. And step six, we can tweak the curves using dynamic edits, meaning we can edit the sketches, and I'll show you some other tools that will aid us in editing the sketch. And, and really, step six can be done throughout this entire process. We can do dynamic edits at each one of those steps to edit our curve, and then therefore editing our surface, and therefore editing our solids. So let's go ahead and take a look Look in solid edge. I just have a blank part, and and what we're going to do is just come in the sketch, and we're all familiar with sketching. We have our sketch tools, but the tool I want to point out that we some of you may not use and introduce one of those for more contour surfaces would be this curve tool. This contour, or I'm sorry, these B spline curve. So as I start clicking, every click is going to create a um, edit point, which you'll see in a second. So I'm just kind of doing a smooth curve. If I take my select tool and click on that, you see that where there's a dot on the curve, that's called an edit point, and where you see this polygon, this edit polygon, there's these vertices at that. So at each 
at either a, a vertice here where I'm clicking and dragging or at an edit point I can click and drag there. Either way I'm, I'm modifying the curve. The other thing over in command bar you'll notice that the default is local edit. So right now if I move this edit point and I pull this straight up you see it's more of a localized edit at that top of that, that hump. If I turn to a shape edit and I pull straight up on the same edit, edit point, you see that the entire curve is doing more of a shape edit. So keep in mind when you're editing curves, you have two options, whether you do a local edit or a shape edit. And this is a 2D sketch, so you'll see that we still have our constraints, our horizontal verticals connects, and we have our dimension tools as well. So if we want to lock down one side of that curve or that entire curve, we can do that with our sketches, or I'm sorry, our constraints and dimensions just like as a regular sketch. The other thing here, if I want to look at what we're doing is, is creating, you're going to hear me say cross sections and guide curves a lot today. So to create some of these blue surfs and the swept surfaces, we're going to have cross sections to, to guide curves. So here maybe this is going to be one of my cross sections for my surface. And we want to rip off another cross section um, with a parallel plane. Well, you might think, well, I'll do a sketch, parallel plane, do an include. That works, but I also want to introduce you to a tool you may not use. It's called a tear-off sketch. If I go to tear-off sketch and say I want to create a parallel plane, maybe I want this one to be, you know, four inches behind there. And before I actually pick the curve, if I go into the options box, you will see that I have three options. I have copy elements, and you see associativity. And what that means, if I change my original sketch, my new sketch will change the same way also because it's associative. If the second option is copy elements and not be associative, so it's just going to copy it to another reference plane and not be associative. And the third and final option for tear off sketch is move elements. So I can just say move it from this plane to that plane. For the first one, I'm going to go ahead and keep it associative. So then I've already created my plane. I'm just going to go on to the next step, pick my curve, hit accept, and you see how it tore off that, that sketch on the other side. Let's go ahead and create another one, maybe parallel plane towards us. I'll come out in front of us. This time I'm going to go to the options and I'm going to check non-associative. I'm going to make a copy, but it's not going to be associative. And I'm going to pick the curve and it'll bring it forward to that parallel plane. So you see that's a, a quick and easy way to replicate sketches using the different plane creation techniques. So if I come in here and, and do a dynamic edit, if you're not familiar with the dynamic edit, you can highlight the feature and go to dynamic edit or you can double click on it. And when I click that, you see that I can grab my edit points and notice how both curves that are associative to each other are moving. So I'm moving the center curve and the curve in the back is moving because of the associativity. If I come to the front curve, I said don't make that associative and you see how I move the front curve and it's not updating the other ones. And just to quickly get a, um, a, uh, a introduction to the surface, if I go into the blue surf command and I said we're going to be going from cross section to cross section, in this case to cross section, I'm just going to pick one cross section, hit accept, hit the next cross section, hit accept, and the last cross section, hit accept. Keep in mind I don't have to come over here to accept, I can hit right mouse button or enter. So just like I did before, if I come in here and do a dynamic edit on my sketches and I grab one of them handle points or those polygon vertices, you see I'm moving the curve, therefore it's updating my surface. And if I come up to the front curve, the one that wasn't associative, same thing as we saw before, only that curve is updating. So just to give us a quick introduction of what we're going to see on our screen. Okay, let me go ahead and then just come into another blank part, and we'll come back to a couple of those ideas at the end as a construction service. On the surfacing tab, You'll notice here's our different surfaces, surface commands. We've got blue surf, swept surface, bounded surface, extruded surface, revolve, and some trimming, trimming utilities, which we'll take a look at. And over here we have some curves. Maybe we want to create a 3D curve. Well, we have key point curve, just like it sounds. We can snap to endpoints, midpoints, different key points on a sketch to create that 3D curve. In the same flyout, we also have a curve by table. So what that is is I could have an Excel spreadsheet, first three columns could be X, Y, Z, and I could read that table into my part model. As far as creating 3D curves on the fly based on basic or existing geometry, I can do an intersection curve, which would be between two surfaces. I can project a curve. 
and I can do a cross curve. So let's take a, a look at a couple of those examples. If I'm just going to create a sketch, just an analytical sketch, and maybe we'll do some lines and arcs. And I'll come in here and I'll just do a tangent arc off the top. Go ahead and close that in. And I'm going to turn that. And let's just throw this guy on the center just so we can see what's going on a little better. Alright, so there's there's say sketch one, just a 2D sketch. I'm going to come in there and create a sketch on the mid plane uh, perpendicular to it. Now one thing I want to point out, and we'll talk about some of these requirements later, is that when I'm creating different cross sections and guide curves, I need to make sure that my sketches are attached. So if I hold my cursor over the left of that, that horizontal sketch that I've already created, you'll get the feedback that's a pierce point. And what a pierce point is, it's saying where the plane I'm currently on is piercing the existing sketch, and what that feedback is letting me know is that when I start to sketch my new line, or in this case arc, that they're going to be attached. So where that existing sketch pierces the plane, I'm, a, I'm snapping to that. If you don't have pierce point available in your feedback when you're sketching, go up here to your IntelliSketch options, click on the Relationships tab, and make sure that you have pierce point turned on. So I know that those are connected. Okay, so you see my, my finished two sketches. I have an arc across the center and then the uh, sketch horizontal. Now, I mentioned that the tool intersection is the curve at the intersection of two surfaces. So it's great if I have two surfaces already, I can get the intersection of those for a 3D curve. To create those surfaces, I'm going to just do an extruded surface, and you see that my extruded surface, it can be an open profile. I'm just going to extrude that up till it passes through the arc. And I'm going to go ahead and accept this one and I'm going to extrude it through with an extruded surface in the other direction and, and that way you see they intersect. So now if I come up to my intersection curve command I can go to intersection, select one body, select the other body and instantly I have my, my 3D curve. So if I hide the sketches in those two um, surfaces you see that I have my result as a 3D curve. Now, that's great if I have those two extruded surfaces, but what if I didn't have those? Let me go ahead and um, um, hide that and turn back on my original two sketches I created. And you'll notice if I go to cross curve, I click cross curve, and it'll do the same thing. I hit one curve, accept the other curve, and you see that it will project them onto each other, therefore giving me a 3D curve. To go ahead and, and show you how the uh, another tool called bounded surface. Bounded surface creates a surface within a closed boundary. So as long as I have a closed curve, closed sketches, closed surfaces, I can create a bounded surface. So I'm just going to go around and pick my curve or change. It must be a closed loop for this command to succeed. And you see there I have a bounded surface just filling in that gap. And notice how it's tangent, so to speak, to those to those curves. It stays in line with them. Earlier you saw if we come in here and did a dynamic edit on those sketches, obviously my surface is going to update. I'm just editing that, that radius across the top of the sketch. The other thing I want to talk about and introduce a couple more um, um, surfaces to you is, let me, bear with me one second here, let me open up a couple of files. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you Blue Surf. Now Blue Surf, let me go ahead and open up this other one. Now Blue Surf, you see what I have as far as sketches here. You see the sketch one is kind of the outer way, outer edge, of, if you will, of what the surface is going to be. And sketch two, sketch three, and sketch four, those arcs are going to be my cross sections. So when I come into Blue Surf, and those sketches are connected using Pierce points or blue dots, which I'll explain in a minute. If I go into Blue Surf, You'll notice that Blue Surf, I can start at a vertex point, and I'm on the cross section step. So I'm going to come on and just pick a next cross section, hit accept, next cross section, next cross section, and I can go up to the other vertex point. And you notice it previews the Blue Surf cross section, cross section, cross section. 